starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Korn. Time is running out for Eddie Jacks. Only a few minutes ago, he received a frantic phone call from Leslie Harrington. The message, end Martin Payton's life tonight. It must be tonight. Eddie's first step is to set up the time and place alibi. He must set it up with someone who would never try to protect him or lie for him. Ada Jacks, the wife Eddie deserted many years ago. What's the matter with you? I feel horrible. Then go on home. Thanks, but I can't afford a night off. Well, you don't look so hot. I don't know. Maybe it's the flu. I ache all over. Well, whatever you got, I don't need you around here giving it to my customers. Well, I said maybe. Maybe it's just old age creeping up on me. But I wouldn't expect you to know what I'm talking about. You got a fever? I don't want you fussing over me. Either. I just don't want you to make anybody else sick just because you're too stupid to. Okay, okay. I'll just work until my break. Nine o'clock. That's the least I can do for you on a Saturday night. Oh. I managed for 18 years of Saturday nights without your help. One more isn't going to make any difference one way or another. Oh, boy. If I had stayed in my room and called in sick, you would have spent half the night telling all the drunks what an irresponsible, no-account character I am. But just because I show up... Oh, you... poor Eddie Jacks. Nobody understands him and nobody appreciates him. Oh. Look, don't do me any favors, you understand? If you don't feel well enough to work, go home. I said I'd stick it out till 9 o'clock. And that's what I'm going to do. Come in. Did you send for me, Martin? You know, Adrian, a distressing amount of people have turned down invitations to our wedding. The Simpsons are the latest. Does that surprise you? <laughs> well, hardly. But I just wanted to prepare you for a more intimate gathering. Martin. In view of what's happened, don't you think it would be better if we went away together quietly? Well, you don't mean sneak away to a justice of the peace? Like two infatuated adolescents. Well, that's bound to be embarrassing for you as well as for me. True, but after our marriage, my life in this town will be much more than embarrassing. It'll be impossible. You know, I've been giving it quite a bit of thought. I decided we should leave Peyton Place, close down this house, start our life together somewhere else. New York. Now, how do you like that? That would be fine. Yes, you might like an apartment facing the park. Though I'm told such vacancies are at a premium. Yes, they are hard to find. Well, we've had a stroke of very good fortune. I asked my attorney to see what he could find. When he was in New York last week, he came up with something I think will really please you. This is a lease on a very lavish apartment on Fifth Avenue. 32nd floor, corner, eastern and southern exposure. Oh, I, I know a wife likes to choose her own home. But after all, you did choose this once before, didn't you? 
This is the apartment that Philip and I lived in. And where Philip died in. You don't mean it. You couldn't possibly. I've already signed the lease. Occupancy to start the first of next month. This is monstrous. Even for you. For me? <laughs> for me, it's just a tastefully decorated, centrally located, convenient apartment. What it means for you is quite another thing. Adrian? May I have permission to go to my room, please? Permission? Isn't that what a prisoner has to ask? Permission? You can leave whenever you wish. Isn't that your wedding gown? I was trying it on when you summoned. Adrian, don't you know that it's bad luck for the bridegroom to see his bride in her wedding dress before the ceremony? Bad luck for the groom? Oh, no, Martin. I see nothing ahead for you but good fortune. Because you're going to have exactly what you wanted. The pleasure of being a jailkeeper. I was just going to put these flowers in the living room, sir. Come up here. Yes, sir. In my room. Yes, sir. Sleep overnight? How come? Well, I'll need your help in the morning to dress for the wedding. Your help and your support. That is, if you're willing to expand your duties to play the gentleman's gentleman for me. Are you kidding? It'd be my pleasure. I guess I can sack out in that room over the garage, huh? Yes, I've told Mary to put it in order for you. Are you afraid of something? Oh, now, Lee, <laughs> don't jump to conclusions. Well, then don't you try to fool me. Now, yesterday you told me you don't even want to marry that girl, but you have to. You told me not to ask any questions. I said, okay, but I don't like it, Mr. Payton. Now, I, I know she's got you all shook up, and I want to know why, so just put it to me level and straight. Impossible. Well, then don't go through with the marriage. Now, look, you tell me you need a bodyguard for your wedding night. What am I supposed to say? Swell, boys, congratulations? No, supposed to say nothing. And do nothing. Like maybe let that motorcycle run you over. Oh, I don't doubt your loyalty, Lee. It's, it's your discretion. <laughs> you know, I don't think I could face the prospect of moving to New York without you. New York? Yes, I've leased Mrs. Van Leiden's old apartment. At her request, of course. You mean the place where her old man went out the window? Where? Dr. Van Leiden died, yes. Your duties there will be quite different. You'll be much more than a chauffeur. I want you to live in and look after my things and become familiar with my medications, the exact dosage for each drug. I don't want anyone but you or myself to handle my medicine. What about Mrs. Van Leiden? No more questions. Please, Lee, I simply can't say any more about it. Well, you can relax, Mr. Payton. As long as I'm around, you're going to be all right. Mrs. Van Leiden or anybody else better not get anything started they don't want me to finish. Thank you, my boy. Thank you. Compass, emergency flares, scarf, 
chewing gum in there. Let's see, winter underwear, a hacksaw in the car, uh, and two inflatable St. Bernard dogs. <clears throat> socks? Oh, socks. What happens if a Harrington heir decides to be born right out there in the middle of that winter wonderland? Not time yet, silly. Yeah, well, you know it, and I know it, but maybe he doesn't know it. Don't worry, I'll tell you what to do. Well, who's going to tell you what to do? I already know. Oh. Besides, I thought you wanted to be alone with me in this winter wonderland. Well, I do, but you do happen to be a little pregnant, you know. And you changed your mind. You don't want to go, right? Wrong. But I think we should take someone along just in case. In case of what? Well, in case of anything. Let's say I get run over by some ski bum or something. Who's going to take care of you then? Don't worry. Nothing's going to happen. Okay, but just to be safe, which undoubtedly is a sign that my youth has passed, <laughs> who should we take? You old man. I love you. And thanks for worrying about me. Who should we take? How about, uh... Rod. No, nah, he's too tied up with the grease pit. What about Grandfather Peyton? Very funny. <laughs> Wait a minute. How about your dad? Yeah, you know what I mean. Are you serious? Sure. Sort of make up to him for avoiding him? Well, that's not the only reason. He is your father. You like him. And I could learn to like him. A little. Well, I mean, if I tried a lot. Ha, ha, ha. No, wait a minute. I didn't mean it the way it came out. I think it'd be very nice if we invited him. He'd be delighted. Okay. Go over there and call him up and invite him. Let's both invite him. Wait a minute. Maybe we better tell your mom what we're doing, because she's going to find out anyway. Ooh, I don't think that's such a good idea. She's never going to get over her feelings about Eddie, and it just make more trouble. If I'm going to build up my relationship with your father, you're not going to get off free. So I'm going to go tell your mother face to face. Okay. I'll clobber her with kindness. And I'll be very nice to your daddy. I appreciate you thinking about him. He'll appreciate it, too.